Hi again, everyone. Gary Digital Williams here on Boxing Law on the Beltway. Our news and notes for this week. And uh, this week, what we have to do, to tell you the truth, is update the Beltway boxing schedule because uh, we have had so many changes, additions, subtractions in some cases uh, on the schedule. And we have a lot of, lot of boxers going uh, different locations, a lot of big bouts coming up in the next couple of weeks. So we're going to give you an update on the Beltway boxing schedule, both in and out of the Beltway for the next few weeks. And it starts this weekend, of course, with the first title defense for the WBC featherweight champion of the world. That is, of course, Gary Russell Jr. out of Capitol Heights, Maryland. He'll defend his title against Patrick Highland out of Ireland. Patrick the Punisher Highland. And uh, he will be the challenger for Gary Russell Jr. That bout will be on Showtime. Of course, Gary Russell Jr., 26-1, 15 KOs. Megan, as we said, the first defense of his title that he won on March 28th, almost a year, a little over a year ago now, against Johnny Gonzalez in Las Vegas, Nevada. And he faces a pretty interesting guy in Patrick Highland, 31-1, with 15 KOs to his credit, coming off four straight wins. Uh, against pretty good competition. His last bout was on October 10th when he knocked out David Martinez in the eighth round in Lowell, Massachusetts. So we'll see if he's bet to the, up to the big task. He did have a title, title shot at the interim WBA World Featherweight title in December of 2012, but he lost a 12 million M decision to Javier Fortuna. So he's bought, fought quality competition. Should be a great bout. And again, that's the headliner on Showtime Championship Boxing. Now, what makes it special also for the Russell family is that little brother Antonio Russell will be on the card. And uh, he is 5 and 4 KOs. He's scheduled to take on Alberto Chulo Cholo. So Alberto Cholo Serna out of Agua Puerta, Sonora, Mexico. He's had a record of 2 and 4. Uh, Antonio Russell, 5 and 4 KOs, coming off a third round TKO over Eduardo Melendez in Orlando, Florida, on October 30th. Um, Serena fought in Dodge City, Kansas, back in February of this year and lost by second-round TKO. He's been knocked out in his last two bouts. So, should be interesting to see if he question whether now how far into the card is Antonio's bout and if that big brother can watch the bout before he gets focused for the uh, big bout that he has coming up on on that date, on on uh, April 16th, that'll be at the Foxwoods Casino in Mashantucket, Connecticut. Now, also on April 16th, in Las Vegas, and this will be on the CBS Sports Network, Malik Iceman Hawkins out of Baltimore. He's a super welterweight, 6-0-5 KOs. He'll take on Errol Sidney out of New Orleans, Louisiana, who's 6-1-2 with two KOs. This could be very interesting to see what happens here in, in this bout. Um... This will be the most successful opponent that bo- both guys have fought, actually. Uh, Malik Hawkins has fought three guys who made pro debuts and coming off a first-round knockout of Cody Peterson on February 19th in Sloan, Iowa. That bout was also on CBS Sports Network, as a matter of fact. Errol Sidney is, uh, as you said, 6-1-2, and two, two KOs. He's coming off four straight, five straight wins, excuse me, five straight wins, and actually he's, he's unbeaten in his last seven. He has... Has a draw in there, but uh, he came up. He beat a guy named Jose Rodriguez, who was eight and one at the time, and won a four round majority decision in Frisco, Texas, on August the first. So we'll see what happens here. Malik Hawkins going up against Arrow Sydney. That bout will probably kick off the uh, CBS Sports Network telecast on um, April sixteenth. Andre Berto is fighting on that card as the headliner there. Now. Also on April 16th, believe it or not, the Marcus Chop Chop Coy, the former WBO welterweight, junior welterweight champion, will be on the card, and he'll be going after the interim WBC Latino lightweight championship when he takes on Adrian Estrella. Adrian Diamante Estrella from Monterrey, Nuevo Leon, Mexico. That's where the bout will take place on April 16th. And uh, if, you watch, if you follow my blog... I uh, put up a press release that basically said Corey believes that Straya is really making a mistake going up against him. Now, of course, he would say that, but uh, Straya, who is twenty-five and one with twenty-three knockouts, 
and he has knocked out his last uh, five five out of his last six bouts, and then one bout he lost was in that mix on May of 2015. He lost uh, a second round TKO to Edmund Sonsona, and then he bounced back with three straight wins, uh, last beating Alfonso Perez on January 23rd by a fifth round knockout in Guadalupe, Mexico. Uh, Demarcus Corley, 44, 26 and one with 26 knockouts. He has actually won his last two. Uh, he defeated Osama Hadifi. That was a pretty big bout because Hadifi was undefeated at the time and the bout was in Denmark and Corley stopped in the sixth round, stopped Hadifi in the sixth round. Then he was involved in what amounted to, from what I heard from my buddy, uh, George Hanson Jr. in Philadelphia, who is originally, he's originally from Jamaica, by the way. Um, Corey was involved in some version of the contender in Jamaica. And he won about a five round bout over someone named Iwan Azori, uh, who was 16, five and three going in that bout. And he won it in Kingston, Jamaica on March the 16th. So he is still in great shape. Just fighting a month after that bout, he won a five-round unanimous decision. So it was a version of contender. If you remember the old contender series, the bouts were five rounds in length. So uh, that'll be interesting to see what happens there. As uh, Corley takes on Australia, Corley believes that he's got the experience, and of course he does, to take on uh, and beat Adrian Estrella on April 16th in Mexico. So big day on april 16th no question about that now let's move to tuesday night april, uh, april 19th and this will be at the sands bethlehem event center in bethlehem pennsylvania and this bout will be on fox sports one that'll mean emmanuel aleem out of richmond virginia he will go up against jonathan cepeda out of new york city by way of new jersey emmanuel aleem undefeated 15 and 9 ko's uh, out, of, out of richmond virginia coming off a tough Eight round split decision on national television against Carlos Galvan. He won that bout in Trenton, New Jersey, back on December the eighth, and that was a tough bout. And you see the step up of uh, Aleem in this case. Well, he does step up again against Jonathan Cepeda, who is seventeen and one with fifteen KOs coming off. He's actually stopped his last four um, opponents, including a first round stoppage of. Latakwe Hammond. That was the best I can do with that first name in Atlanta, Georgia. Now, actually, Jonathan Cepeda has fought here twice. And to tell you the truth, I missed both times he fought. He fought on two Jetta Promotions cards. One was on August um, 9th at the North Hall and Eastern Market. And uh, Minor, Quincy Minor, was the was um, disqualified in that bout in the second round. Then he fought uh, Lester Gonzalez at the ABC sports complex in October of 2014, won a fifth round technical knockout. And both those bouts, I could not attend. I had, had some other things I had to do that particular, those particular days. And I could not attend either one of those bouts. So I've not seen him. Um, he has not fought the best of competition. Uh, Jonathan Reed is probably his most noted bout. Jonathan Reed from the contender. Uh, he beat him in the third round back in January of 2015. So he hasn't fought anybody quite like, his opponent he's going to fight in this particular case, and that is Emmanuel Alim. So that it, it, we see what happens there. Alim has fought some some pretty quality people. Not every not everybody he's fought has been quality either. Um, except his last three bouts have been against David Torbill, who he blitzed in the first round back in May of 2015. Then he knocked that. Then he won a six round NAM decision over Oscar Rios in uh, California, Pennsylvania. On in September of 2015, so that could be a good one. That's going to be on on FS1, Fox Sports One, um, coming up on Tuesday night, April the 19th. That should be very interesting as, and, indeed. Now on Wednesday, April 20th, uh, Lante Slides of Fox is scheduled to be on the Bella Entertainment card at in Westchester, New York. Uh, no word yet on his opponent. Uh, Lantez Fox, 18-0-1 with seven KOs, coming off a really nice fourth-round stoppage of Todd Manuel back on November 13th in Biloxi, Mississippi. So uh, we'll see what happens with Lantez Fox going forward on Wednesday, April 20th. Then, of course, we get to Saturday, April 23rd, and that means, of course, primarily the biggest bout, arguably, of the month, and that is Dominic Wade going up against Gennady Golotkin, from the form in Inglewood, California. That'll be, of course, on HBO. And uh, again, 
We've said it many times. It's a no lose situation for Dominic Wade. <clears throat> there's there's slightly growing um, sentiment that Dominic does have a really good chance in this bout. Um, that's mostly coming out of here, of course. So it's obviously fan support more than anything else. I think the the definite um, common thought is that uh, Dominic Wade has very little, if not no chance of beating Gennady Golovkin on April 23rd. My biggest hope is that he does put on a good show and he does uh, try to to do well and maybe catches some breaks, uh, maybe catches uh, uh, Gennady Golovkin unawares and gets him early and we'll see what happens. But uh, it, it, I just hope my, my biggest fear is that it will look like what happened this past weekend in England when Anthony Joshua knocked out Charles Martin, who you, know, you wonder how Charles Martin got to be IBF champion. And just a few months prior to that, he was supposed to take on our very own Dwayne McCray in the Bowden Madison Square Garden that, that the, uh, that the uh, New York State Athletic Commission actually nixed because uh, they felt Dwayne Wade was not um, – a good enough opponent, not quite frankly. He he had not uh, fought the quality competition, and he had not fought the ten rounds that that bout was scheduled to go. So, I just hope it doesn't end up like that. I think a lot of people believe it will end up like that, but uh, we'll just have to wait and see. April twenty third, a form in Inglewood, California. That'll be again on HBO Live. So, uh, again, no lose situation for Dominic Wade because. He's not supposed to win, but if he does do well, he's definitely on the map. Uh, more than on the map. He is a, a star overnight. There's no question about that. So that's uh, April 23rd is Saturday, a week from Saturday in uh, Foreman, Inglewood, California. Also on April 23rd, Aaron Bratton, a heavyweight out of Baltimore, will be in a card at the Catskills in New York, in Catskill, New York. And he will take on Detroit bulldozer or destroy depending on what name he uses on particular night i guess uh jones detroit jones out of Potts camp mississippi now aaron bratton is two and two one ko he's coming off a actually come off a win way back in october of 2014 uh he hasn't fought since then he fought uh in scranton past pennsylvania against chin achebe won a fourth round tko detroit jones has not fought since the since uh, April of 2011, and he is 5 0 and 1 with two KOs. So this could be very interesting indeed. So it could be it could be a good situation with Aaron Bratton. He's been out for two years. Detroit Jones will be out for five years by the time this bout takes place. So uh, we'll see what happens with that one. Also, April 23rd in Elizabeth City, North Carolina, Linwood, Mr. Composure Dozier is scheduled to be on the card. And uh, we know we don't know what it, who his opponent is going to be. Uh, Dozier is going to try to break a five bout losing streak. He's nine and ten with one draw and four KOs. He's lost some quality people though. He's lost to Yuri Foreman. He's lost to Javier Molina. He lost to Patrick Day. He did lose to Pritchard Cologne back in August of 2014 at the Barclays Center, and he lost to Udell Johnson. And only four losses between those. Uh, five guys that he has lost to. His last win came on in September of 2013 in Weirton, West Virginia. He won a four-round unanimous decision over Gabriel Morris. So uh, that's Lenwood Dozier, April 23rd in Elizabeth City, uh, North Carolina. Then on Friday, April 29th, at the Taj Mahal, the Trump Taj Mahal in Atlantic City, New Jersey, we have three Beltway boxers on this card. And uh, interesting. And uh and also, there will be a bus trip going to the car. Keystone Boxing is, is giving a bus trip on this car. Now, the bus trip basically only highlights one boxer from the Beltway, but there actually are going to be three boxers on the Beltway from the Beltway on this car. One of them is going to be Luther Lights Out Smith, and this is going to be, I think, a big bout for Luther Smith. He's out of Crofton, Maryland, heavyweight 4-0, all four wins by knockout. He'll take on Mark Rideout out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He's 4-1-2 and two with one KO. Now, I say it's a big bout because, quite frankly, we don't know how good Luther Smith is yet. Uh, he's fought you know, substandard opposition. But he's done what he's supposed to do with substandard opposition. He's knocked them out. 
Uh, his pro debut was against a guy who was 0 1. That was Jonathan Williams. He knocked out Skylar Marshall, who everybody knocks out. That was in August of 2015. Uh, Malcolm Ware was a pro debut. And then back on February 27th at the Washington Convention Center, he stopped Charlemagne Jones in the second round. So he hasn't fought anybody really any kind of quality. Uh, Mark Rideout could fit that bill, except for the fact that Rideout has not fought since May of 2014. And his last fight was an eight round decision law, you know, decision loss to Joey DeWaco. So he's not fought the best of competition. He has a draw against Eric Newell, who's seven, two and one, a draw against Fred Latham, who is who was four and oh at the time. And the other people he's beaten, he went went uh, four rounds with Baltimore's Lonnie Cornegay and won a majority decision there. I mean, so he hasn't fought the best of competition, but it is Smith's first road trip. And it can anything can happen in a situation like that. And so we'll have to see how he well he does uh in that situation. So Luther Smith and they I believe it'll be a four round bout against Mark Rideout, April twenty ninth at the Taj Mahal. Also in another heavyweight bout, Alondo Pugh out of Washington DC, who trains out of Baltimore, Maryland. He'll take on and he's gonna have a tough one. <laughs> and I've talked about this earlier uh, early in the month, but he's gonna have a tough one when he takes on brutal Brendan Barrett out of Little Ed Harbor, New Jersey. He's three and oh, two KOs. This kid can flat out hit. Actually, he's not a kid. He's 34 years old. He can flat out hit. Um, last time we saw him was at the ABC Sports Complex in January of this year. He scored a second round knockout TKO over Marquise Benson. He also has knocked out Skylar Marshall. Um, in the second round, that was ugly as well. He did in his next in his last bout, however, he he fought a six round draw against Daniel Pasciola, who was six and one going in, and that was at Boardwalk Hall in Lang City. That was again on February nineteenth. So, I don't know if Lando Pugh has enough to to uh, to handle brutal Ben Brendan Barrett. I I do believe in Pugh's last bout, which was against Wesley Trippett on February twenty seventh at the Washington Convention Center. I thought Pugh got robbed. I thought Pugh. Um, I saw the tail end of that. We were getting ready for, for my broadcast and we kind of missed that bout, but a lot of people were very upset at, at Pew, at that situation. And, uh, a lot of people thought that Lando Pew could, should have come away with a win on that bout. So, uh, we'll see what we can do and, and turn it around. He's got a five bout losing streak. He's trying to get rid of, but again, he's going to have a tough one against Brendan Barrett. Now the bus trip is basically, uh, working around Antonio Teflon Magruder out of Washington, D.C., super lightweight, and he'll be on this card. No word yet on his opponent at, at the Chum Taj Mahal, but uh, Magruder coming off about on February 27th at the convention center, won a third-round knockout over Terrell James. So that was the last time Magruder has fought, and that was actually the first time Magruder has fought in almost three years. So it's good to see Teflon back in there, and again, there'll be a, uh, there'll be a uh, bus trip Sponsored by Keystone Boxing. You go to keystoneboxing.com. You can get information on that uh, going up to the Trump Taj Mahal on Friday, April 29th. Then on Saturday, April 30th, of course, we will have a card here at the D.C. Armory with the doubleheader of the uh, Super Middleweight Championship. WBC Super Middleweight Champ, Badu Jack, will take on uh, former world champion Lucien Boutte. And on the IBF side, champion James DeGale will take on Rogelio Medina. Now, as I talked to Juan Marshall about this on the uh, broadcast from the ABC Sports Complex in Springfield, Virginia, hope you had a chance to listen to that on the Box Lawn Bubble, a Google app for Android or on Spreaker.com and iHeartRadio.com. Uh, the YouTube broadcast, and I'm just going as an aside while I'm thinking about this, the YouTube broadcast actually got muted. You cannot hear anything on that broadcast. And the reason is... During the broadcast, the DJ played a song. Uh, I believe it was um, "Can't Be F- Can't Feel My Face" by The Weeknd, and that is a copywritten song. And apparently, um, the folks from The Weeknd, maybe The Weeknd himself, heard it. I'm glad they're listening, but uh, I guess they heard it, or somebody heard it. Maybe folks at YouTube heard it, and. Because of the copyright situation, they muted the entire broadcast. So you cannot hear the broadcast on YouTube. Hopefully that will not happen again. Um, but uh, 
that is what happened in that situation. So nothing we can do about that, unfortunately. Um, it just happened to be that way. So yeah, that was a weird situation. But I uh, hope you had a chance to listen to it either on speaker.com or iHeartRadio.com. And we did talk about the uh, doubleheader at the D.C. Army coming up on April 30th. And I'm hoping more, based on what has been happening in the area, that more casual fans have now become a little bit more hardcore fans and just want to see good live boxing. And you're going to see it. These should be two very good bouts. But I'm really afraid that this particular bout will be more for the for the hardcore boxing fan as opposed to the casual fan. Adrian Bronner was, yes, for the, high, high, the uh, hardcore boxing fan, but I think a lot more casual fans were in attendance um earlier this month on april 1st i think this one's for the hardcore and i think they're going to be some people who actually come in from out of this country uh there'll be folks from canada uh to watch lucian Boutte, uh maybe some f- people from england coming to see uh james de gale so maybe some from i think medina's from mexico so maybe some some people from mexico will be there as well so there'll be some traveling fans on this but i think for the Beltway fans, this may be a little bit one, a little bit hard one to uh, to comprehend a little bit. I mean, I'm glad it's here. Don't get me wrong; I think it's great, but uh, I think this may be a hardcore boxing fan card. I could be wrong, and I think a lot depends on who else is on the card. And quite frankly, we haven't heard a whole lot about that. So, hopefully, in the next couple weeks, we'll hear more about who is going to be on the undercard of that card on April 30th. Now, that card, of course, will be on Showtime. April 30th on the Fox Network. Not FS1, Fox Network. Thomas Top Dog Williams Jr. will be in a big bout. He'll take on Edwin Labamba Rodriguez, uh, Dominican Republic. And that bout will be a 10-rounder from the StubHub Center in Carson, California. And that, again, will be on the Fox Network. Thomas Williams, of course, 19-1, 13 KOs, coming off a nice second-round knockout win over Humberto Savigny on November 13th in Biloxi, Mississippi. That was on national television as well. Uh, he also won a 10 round unanimous decision on Michael Gabenga of, in Chicago, Illinois, in December of 2014. Edwin Rodriguez, 28-1 with 19 KOs. And uh, he has fought some, some very good competition. His last two bouts were back-to-back against undefeated boxers. Craig Baker, he beat him on May 23rd of 2015. In Boston, Massachusetts, third round knockout. Michael Seals, he scored a third round knockout against uh, Seals in Biloxi, Mississippi. It was the very same card that Thomas Williams was on. And uh, he scored a third round knockout on that one. So this bout has been really kind of bandied about for quite some time. And uh, finally got this one going. It was a 10-round bout on the Fox Network, primetime. Uh, Thomas Williams taking on Edwin Rodriguez. And also on that card, on the undercard, no word yet when that this bout makes television, but this should be a good one as well. Uh, Phil Jackson Benson, the real deal, will will be on the card against David Red Flag Benavides out of Phoenix, Arizona. Phil Jackson Benson, of course, 16-2, 15 KOs, came off a nice third-round knockout on the 28th of August uh, at the, uh, ABC, at the uh, Washington Convention Center. Actually, it should be the 27th of August, I believe. And Washington Convention Center uh, scored a third-round knockout there. Uh, that was his first win since his loss to Darnell Boone back in uh, April of 2015. David Benavides uh, won a second-round knockout over Kevin Cobbs on January 19th of this year in Los Angeles, California. And uh, Benavides has knocked out his last five boxers so uh, this should be an interesting one a big big uh, bout for phil jackson benson if he wants to stay in the mainstream in the light heavyweight division uh he has to win that particular bout so that's april 30th at the stub hub center carson california and that is of course uh the um card that'll be on fox network now, also in April, we've got the Junior Olympics continuing at Rosecroft Raceway this Saturday, April 13th. Uh, doors open at 3 o'clock for that one. That's the second uh, local Junior uh, Olympics uh, competition. Then they go to the um, they go to the regionals in Salisbury, Maryland in the middle of May. So that would be the Junior Olympic regionals in the middle of May. Meanwhile, the regional Golden Gloves will take place at 
the Rosecroft Raceway in Fort Washington, Maryland. That'll be on Saturday, April 30th as well. And uh, we will not be there. We'll be at the uh, pro show. But uh, the winners of that, especially for an open division, will be in Salt Lake City in Utah in May. So that'll be uh, the middle of May for the National Golden Gloves. So we'll tell you who the regionals will be, uh, who will win their regionals in just in, uh, on April 30th. We'll get the results for you, post them, of course, and talk about it here on the podcast. Then we get into May. May 13th, of course, Friday, May 13th, we're back at the D.C. Army for the Rock Nation Throne Boxing Card. And that, of course, featured Dusty and Anders Harrison taking on Mike Dallas Jr. We don't know a whole lot about that card either other than that. Uh, no word yet or any other Beltway boxes on that card May 13th. And so uh, we'll keep you posted on that as well. And then on Saturday, May 14th, Maryland Fairgrounds in Timonium, Maryland. Um, actually, let me go back a little bit. Let me go. I, I, there's one thing I just remembered. We've heard word also. We talked about this briefly on the broadcast from from Springfield, Virginia last weekend. But uh, Lamont Rose Jr., who is a Golden Boy boxer, will be on the undercard of Canelo Alvarez and Amir Khan on Saturday, May seventh. Okay. So we don't know who his opponent's going to be, but we, we know that Lamont Rose Jr. will be on the undercard of Canelo and Khan from Las Vegas, the uh, T-Mobile Arena, brand new T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada, on Saturday, May 7th. Keep posted up on that as well. Again, May 13th, we're at the D.C. Army for the Rock Nation card featuring Dusty Nannis Harrison taking on Mike Dallas. And then on Saturday, May 14th, we'll be at the Maryland Fairgrounds in Timonium. Now, a lot has changed with that card. Uh, originally, as we talked about earlier, they had scheduled a Maryland State Welterweight Championship between James Keepin' Sleepin' Stevenson and Cecil McCall. Well, that will not happen, as we've already talked about. Uh, James Stevenson is still on the card. Cecil McCall is not. But they have now scheduled two Maryland State title bouts. One of them in particular, I think, is going to be a good one. OK, uh, the other one may not be bad either. Now, think about it. the other other one may not be bad, but uh, it's a change of opponent for Travis Reeves. Now, last time we talked about this card, Travis Reeves was scheduled to take on Garrett Wilson out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Well, that won't happen. But Travis Reeves will go after the, Mar- the vacant Maryland State Cruiserweight Championship. He'll take on Larry Hitman Pryor out of Frederick, Maryland. Travis is out of Baltimore, of course. Uh, Travis Reeves, 11-2-2, 5 KOs. Of course, we talked about his development over the last year, which has really gone great guns. Uh, He's really done well. His last few bouts have been devastating knockouts. Samar Barakat in the sixth round. That was was the 2015 Beltway Boxing Knockout of the Year from the Tall Cedar Hall in Baltimore, Maryland on July 9th. And then he followed that up with a first-round knockout on December 12th in Baltimore at the Burns Arena against Anthony Caputo-Smith. He'll face Larry Hitman Pryor, who has lost four bouts in a row. However, they've all been to undefeated boxers. He's lost to Travis Peterkin, Steven Bouja. We saw that bout at the ABC Sports Complex back in January of this year. Fought a very good six-round unanimous decision in that one. That was a very... I mean, uh, Bouja... Couldn't dominate Larry Pryor. Larry Pryor just had no offense. And that's, I think, the biggest fear going into this bout against Travis Reed. Uh, so he's fought guys with a combined record of, of 51 0 and 2 over his last bouts. And then now he fights Travis Reed, who's 11 2 and 2 with five KOs. Larry Pryor is 9 and 13 with five KOs. And he is capable of, of pulling off the big bout, but it was so long ago since he last did it. We don't know if he's really still capable of doing it. And that was back in March of 2011 when he won an eight million unanimous decision over Mark T.N.T. Tucker at the now Eagle Bank Arena at George Mason University in Fairfax, Virginia. And Tucker never fought again after that, I don't believe. And uh, he really uh, prior fought him well in that fight. That was, that was definitely his best bout that I have seen Larry Pryor fight. So... If that Larry Pryor shows up, it could be a very good bout. If not, it may be a short one, in all honesty. Um, Travis Reeves is really just on a mission right now. He's fought very, very well. 
Uh, so that's 10 rounds for the Maryland State Cruiserweight Championship. And that'll be interesting, too, because Travis Reeves has never gone 10 rounds. So that would be a very, I'm not sure, I don't think Pryor has either. Let me just double check that. Uh, he has been eight rounds once, but he's never been 10. So neither one has gone 10 rounds. And that will make things very interesting in that bout. But the bout, I think, that people will be talking about uh, as the night is over will be the matchup for the Maryland State. I believe it's the super featherweight title, although both guys are actually lightweights. So they may drop down to super featherweight for this. I've heard it was a super featherweight bout. Uh, But again, both guys are lightweight, so we'll see. But it's a Maryland State title between Terrell, the show shocker, Samuel, and Joshua Dynamite Davis. That should be a great bout. On paper, that's a fabulous bout. You've got Joshua Davis, who's still up and coming, 10-1, and one, uh, four KOs, hasn't fought since November 2015. He won a four-round unanimous decision over Justin Lopez in at Martins Valley Manage in Cockyville, Maryland, at the uh, Jonathan Ogden situation. Taking on Tyrell the show soccer Samuel, who, quite frankly, has kind of had a renaissance as of late. Um, his last bout was a four-round TKO win over Victor Vasquez in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, back on October 2nd. And so this could be a very interesting bout indeed. No question about that. Um, Terrell had taken some time off. He fought uh, twice in 2010. Um, He had one bout in 2012, another bout, and two bouts in 2014. So he's been kind of spotty. And his wins and losses have been kind of spotty as well. He is, as I said, 16 and 6 with one draw, seven KOs. He's been a part of Maryland State title bouts before. He he fought a trilogy actually against Ron Teflon Boyd, uh, that stretched over a two year period. Um, they fought for the they fought they fought each other uh, back in September 2008 at Michael State Avenue, Glen Burnie, Maryland, and went to a sp- a split decision win for. Terrell Samuel. Then on November of 2008, two months later, they fought again for the Maryland State featherweight, super featherweight title, and uh, Samuel won a Tim Ryan M decision. They fought again in August, uh, May of 2010 at the Scope Arena in North Virginia, and they fought to a six round draw. So that's how weird that was. And that's not the only trilogy that Terrell Samuels had on this record. He actually had one against a boxer named Gustavo Daly. And I think I saw all three of these bouts. I did indeed. Uh, the first bout, Daly lost. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Samuel lost. Six-round split decision. I do remember that. That was back in July of 20, 2009. Two months later, they fought again. And uh, that was at the Shipley Arena in Westminster, Maryland in the rematch. And Daly lost to Samuel. Samuel won an eight-round unanimous decision. Then he fought a third time at DuBurns Arena in Baltimore, and Samuel won by technical decision. I believe it was a cut in that situation in November of 2009, uh, and uh, Samuel won by fifth-round technical decision. So uh, he's fought some good people, but every time he stepped up, uh, he's had trouble. He stepped up against Eric Hunter way back in August of 2007, and Samuel lost a six-round, eight-round unanimous decision. Uh, didn't look all that good in that particular battle. He fought okay. Okay. Uh, he lost a six-round majority decision to to Ryan Belasco. He actually lost a 10-round unanimous decision to Doran Spivey back in April 2010. He lost to Ryan Belasco, six-round majority decision. Everybody thought he might have won that fight. Then he lost an eight-round unanimous decision to David Rodella, that was on July in July of 2014 in Oxnard, California. So the big win for Vasquez, uh, so for uh, Samuel against Vasquez, could prove to be very interesting. Going into this battle against Joshua Davis, who when he's on, he is solid, no question about that. Um, Joshua Davis coming off a four-round unanimous decision win over Justin Lopez. At Martin Valley Mansion, Cockroach Manage, as we said, he's all he also beat Martin uh Hilario Medina at Martin's West in March of 2015. That was on a Shaw Style Promotions card there. Um he's fought some really solid bouts, not against the greatest of competition, uh, but he's just moving up in, in this claim. There's his one loss was to Aaron Chavez. I believe, if memory certain correct, Davis was knocked down at least once in that bout against Aaron Chavez on September 7th of 2013. 
um, lost a four-round unanimous decision there. So this could be a very interesting bout. Again, uh, Davis has been has not been ten rounds. Uh, Samuel has done it once, but that was way back in in two thousand eight. So uh, this will be a very interesting bout for the Maryland State, either super featherweight or the lightweight championship. That'll be Saturday, May fourteenth, at the Maryland State Fairgrounds in Timonium, Maryland. So that is the schedule updated. Uh, it is going to be huge, no question about it. It's going to be very busy as well. So, uh, folks, you got to buckle up and come on out and see these guys. There's some great bouts that the May 14th card also scheduled to have uh, Tyreshia Douglas taking on Nahi Torres. Uh, Sharif Rockman's on this card. Stephen the Surgeon Morris, uh, rookie, is going is on that card. Stephen the Surgeon Morris. And so, just a lot going on in belt, as we always seem to say every week. So, that is the updated schedule. Um, anything subject to change without notice, of course, and We'll be updating as we go along. Soon as we get some matchups and hopefully some updated news on the card May 30th, uh, April 30th, excuse me, at the D.C. Army in Washington, D.C. So a lot going on. Make sure you stay with us right here on the Box on Beltway Google app for Android. Make sure you follow us on the blog, Box on the Beltway, that blogspot.com for more information on updated Beltway boxing news. Thanks for joining us, everybody. I'm Gary Digital Williams. Thank you all for listening, and always remember to keep supporting the best boxing in the world, the boxing along the Beltway. Take care.